What's up guys, Coach Jeremy here. The NHL has started and we get to see the pros at their best. But do you ever wonder what these guys get up to in the off season? Now I was thinking, if only I could shoot a video with... Kevin Bieksa from the Anaheim Ducks. Or maybe even someone like... Ben Sherratt, Winnipeg Jets. Oh wait a second, I happen to see both those guys here at the local rink in Huntsville, Ontario in the middle of nowhere. So I ran into the rink and I told them what I did and I asked if they wanted to pass on some of their tips to you guys and they said sure, grab your skates, grab your camera and come on out. So I set up my camera and they did what every NHL player does when they get interviewed. Yeah, you know it's got check time, all lines are firing. Keep your feet moving. No, get the puck deep, get the puck deep, four lines going. With the programmed interview questions out of the way, it was time to ask them how they prepare for the offseason, and Bieksa instantly threw some shade. Well, uh, when the Jets and Benny are done, usually in like April, uh, he'll, he'll probably take some time off. When I'm done, usually around June, uh, end of May, I'll, uh, I'll take, uh, and, and guys are different, right? Some guys want to take a month off and, and let their body rest, depending on how injured they are. I'm kind of the opposite. I like to take at most a week off and not let your body fall too out of shape and then slowly uh, start building again towards midsummer shape and, and try to get there a little bit earlier than most guys. And then from there, you're, you're off ice or strength and everything's peaked in about July. And then you start getting on the ice and kind of incorporating the skating and the conditioning that way. Surgeries and injuries are part of the game. So making sure those are healed up and you, and you can start training full, full tilt in the summer is important and then as the summer progresses, you work in more skating and, and conditioning on the ice. At the point we're at now, it's a lot of skating. Workouts are a little shorter and it's, uh, you're focused on the ice more. Uh, for my off ice, I have uh, a trainer, a strength coach with our team. He, uh, he sends me my program. Early in the summer, it's more you know, general conditioning, general strength. As the summer goes along, it gets a little more uh, explosive, more quick stuff to, uh, to translate onto the ice. So basically there is no off season. Some are taking a week off, some are taking a month off, but it's not like in the old NHL where guys would just show up to camp and then get in shape. These guys have to show up in great shape and better than they were last season. When we start skating in August, we try to get in these smaller groups. Now it's a little bit different than when I first came in the league. It's more of the focus is on individual skill sessions and smaller groups and reps and game-like situation specific to us two defensemen in particular. When you first start skating you want to feel the puck and you want to work on your edges and, and, and some of the more basic things and because you've been off for a while and we're used to skating every single day in the season and creatures of habit doing the same things over and over so when you're off for the ice for four or five weeks that's a lot for us so try to get the body firing again try to get the growings warmed up because you can't really simulate growing exercises in the summer training. Uh, and then obviously you, you pick up the pace and the conditioning you know, becomes more, more prevalent as you get closer to camp. As a coach, every practice I'm trying to challenge the skaters that have it on the ice, but these guys are going into a pretty challenging season coming up. So I want to know if the summer skates are a little bit easier or if they're looking to be challenged and pushed out there as well. He has a lot of challenges out there lately. Just, it's always a challenge out there. It's a challenge just with the company. I think you, maybe in the earlier sessions, you're just trying to find a rhythm and be a little bit more comfortable, and then you want to start pushing yourself, and if you fall, it's not a big deal. But, uh, you know, I, we've been skating together for a bunch of years now, and he's 10 years younger than me, so he pushes me, and I try to push him, and, and that's who you want to skate with. You want to skate with guys that push you, and guys that are in the same sort of conditioning bracket as you, which is really high. <laughs> Speaking of conditioning, I want to know how well off-ice conditioning, like riding a bike or going for a run, how well does that translate to your improvements on the ice? I found more this summer that uh, I've transferred my conditioning more onto the ice. Um, you know, a lot of guys do a lot of running, a lot of biking, but I found that it doesn't, you know, you could run three miles a day, it doesn't really translate to, to on the ice. So. Skating and getting a lot of my conditioning on the ice is, uh, has been important for me this summer. I like Ben's approach and I'm sure everyone out there can agree if you've been bag skated or really been pushed to skate on the ice, it's a heck of a workout. Your conditioning can really get worked out there. So the last question I asked these guys was about the intensity. They said that they want to be challenged, but what about the intensity? They're pushing themselves really hard or are they just going to go about like 70% because it's still the preseason? No, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's serious. This is our job we do for a living, but we love this. We have fun out here. We joke around. We laugh. We make fun of each other. When it's time to go, we're serious, and we, we do our drills as hard as we can. We're competitive with each other, but uh, we have a blast out here. So 
if you're if you're playing hockey and you're not having fun, you probably should be a skating coach. <laughs> Derek Popke, skating and skills coach, Vancouver Hockey School out of Vancouver, BC. With the NHL guys, we basically do it by month. In July, we uh, really focus on small details, uh, preparing weaknesses, looking at tape of each guy, and then breaking down their weaknesses and focusing on those through repetition. Um, the pace of the sessions really aren't the focus. In, in July, it's more just uh, getting the mechanics down and, and the precision of each skill. Um, once August hits, especially late August like it is now, um, leading up to a couple weeks out of the season, sessions now come into focusing on skill, but really starting to push the pace and getting into game shape and, and getting into the pace of what an NHL game and practice would be like. Now here's a question that I'm sure a lot of you guys would be interested in. What drills are NHL players doing to get better? What's the secret and how can you guys do the same drills? Well, you might be surprised by the answer. I think that that's a big misconception with NHL players. I'm, the, the drills that we'll do, the drills that we'll do with uh, NHL players are the same, uh, same drills that we do with uh, you. We always focus on edge work at the start, get the players warmed up. And then from there, we develop the theme of our practice and we stick with our theme. So uh, the only difference between working with youth hockey players and NHL players is um, it's really at the NHL level, it's position specific. So we'll stick to D-man on the ice. We won't add forwards or if it's forward specific, we'll, we'll stick with forwards. Um, especially when it's skill-based, skill development, that's the way you wanna, you get the most out of practice for sure. That's it for this video, but hit the subscribe button because I laced up the Jets, I mic'd up the coach, and I went out with the boys. I have some really good drills with the insight from the coach sharing why he does the drills, what they're working on. So I have some really good stuff to share with you guys in a future video. Don't miss it. Hit the subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.